So we finally got our hands on the 2023 Zephyrus G14. Now from the outside, it doesn't look a whole lot different. In fact, what I'm looking at right now is last year's G14. See, I tricked you. In fact, wait a sec, this is the new G14. You see, this is the fourth generation of the G14 series, and for the most part, you're still getting the same DNA, except for a few tweaks under the hood. So first off, they've refreshed the CPU to AMD's Ryzen 7040 series, and the GPU has now shifted from AMD's Radeon RX 6000 S series to Nvidia's RTX 40 series. And it's really interesting to see this transition because the year before that, RG was using an Nvidia GPU, and they decided, well, why don't we just try a Radeon GPU, and the performance improvement was pretty incredible, except now AMD just doesn't care about mobile gaming, and so Asus is back to Team Green. And how does that reflect pricing? Well, surprisingly, the base spec is $100 cheaper this time, and that's what I have over here with a Ryzen 9 7940HS CPU with 16 gigs of memory, half a terabyte of storage, which is a bit of a downgrade from last year's one terabyte spec. And then of course you get Nvidia's RTX 4060 GPU with a slightly faster display. You can also find the spec on sale for around $1,400 US on Best Buy at the time of making this video. I'll leave a link down below. You're welcome. Now I need to switch into a little bit of a rant mode here for a sec because Asus has a ton of SKUs for this year's G14. I'm not even kidding. If you go to their website, you'll stumble upon a variety of options ranging from older Zen 3 Plus CPUs repackaged into a newer name, thanks to AMD of course, along with RTX 30 or 40 series GPU. So it can get a lot confusing. Perhaps they're trying to cater this into a different market or maybe there's just not a lot of Zen 4 chips. But if you're all about getting the latest specs, which is something that I value a lot, just please pay attention to the CPU and GPU combo. Just because it's a 2023 model, doesn't mean you're getting the latest hardware. That being said, you can pick up the 4070 version for a tad below $1,900, bump that up to an RTX 4080, and you're looking at around $2,500. And yes, there is an RTX 4090's Q for $3,300. It's hella expensive, but I gotta give it to Asus for pushing the envelope with these specs. But keep note that the 4090 is only running at 125 watts, which is like putting regular gas on a 992GT3. You're just not gonna get the performance as you would expect. So like I mentioned before, not a lot has changed with this year's G14 in terms of design. You still get two color options, Eclipse Gray and Moonlight White. The base model that I have over here does not come with the anime matrix display, but instead you get a prismatic film underneath that uh, showcases a holographic shine it still uses the same Magalunum chassis, and I haven't noticed any improvements to the build quality. The hinge still flexes uh, under minor pressure, and the dimensions, weight, and the included power adapter all remain identical. Now looking at the interior space, the layout remains unchanged, except the keys don't have that greenish pearlescent finish uh, because it now sports a neutral look. And while the keys are backlit in RGB, the combination with these white keys is just not visually appealing. It's like adding salt to your coffee. I mostly just disabled it during my usage since this screen was able to provide sufficient illumination at night. It also lacks brightness. Uh, the light spell is just not uniform. I just really wish they addressed that this year because both the typing and tracking experience with glass trackpad felt similar, but I just feel like Asus is sticking to the if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of approach, which is okay, but I believe they could enhance the overall experience by focusing on finer details in the future. The port setups are basically the same, except they've upgraded the HDMI spec from 2.0B to 2.1 FRL, so you can now run at high resolutions at high refresh rates. Plus, I've had so many issues with my 2020 to G14's HDMI port, it just never gave me an output to my 4K display. Pretty sure it had to do with the AMD GPU. This new model also gets USB 4, which is awesome, so I can now use my Thunderbolt 4 dock uh, to power all of my accessories, including my 4K display, while charging the laptop. Just keep note that there is a power cap at 100 watts, so you will need to plug in uh, the external power adapter to get the best performance. So this is what the webcam looks like on the 2023 G14, and right away I can say that there is a noticeable upgrade compared to the 2022 model because you are getting a 1080p sensor, so it's much more detailed, uh, and the microphone sounds really good. It's just a really good looking webcam. I am so glad that I'm able to see that on something like a 14 inch laptop. Uh, Asus also has a bunch of AI noise cancellation techniques built into the microphone array. So there's cardioid mode, there's omnidirectional mode, uh, and just a bunch of other settings that you can 
tune and play around with uh, through Armory Crate. And yeah, this is a great setup for taking online meetings and maybe even streaming too. As for the speakers, these are still some of the best sounding for a 14 inch gaming laptop. You get two tweeters at the front for better sound projection and a few woofers at the bottom to fill in the base. I take this over bottom facing setups all day, any day. Just a bonus tip, if you want to get more output from these speakers, just head over to Dolby Access and switch from the default music profile to dynamic. It just transforms the way how these speakers sound. Huge shout out to the Reddit community for this tip. I'll leave a link down below uh, for those who want to join. Uh, it's just a great platform just for existing G14 users to just share their thoughts and experience. Now, the display has received some tasteful upgrades like the shift to the new Nebula HDR panel, which utilizes mini LED technology to deliver significantly higher brightness and color output. However, my base spec still features the IPS type display, which is an excellent panel in its own right, offering great Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 coverage. It is identical to what you get with the 2022 model, including brightness levels. Plus, you also get the upgrade from 120 hertz to 165 hertz, which is fantastic for gaming. I'd say that for a 14 inch gaming laptop, this is probably one of the best displays alongside the Razer Blade 14. All right, so when we look at upgradability for the new G14, the layout is pretty much similar to last year's model. So we have a single SOTEM slot that is not populated, which is great because uh, by default, this has 16 gigabytes of memory. So you can populate it with another 16 gigabyte uh, DIMM, which will max it out to 32 gigabytes, which is awesome. Uh, you've got your vapor chamber cooling system here to cool the Ryzen CPU and the NVIDIA GPU and the Gen 4 NVMe SSD has received a significant upgrade compared to last year. So we almost got almost double the throughput in both read and write performance, which is great. Now, what about battery life? Well, I'll be honest with you guys. It's a bit disappointing against the 2022 model and the Razer Blade 14 in our light low test. It's just hard to nail down why this happened, but these numbers were consistent over multiple runs. I'm thinking it has something to do with the way how ASUS handles their low power states, because if you throw a bit of a higher load at the new G14, like a YouTube playback test in this case, it's one of the best laptops we've tested this year, which is so weird, but also good, I guess. Now, while we're in the topic of power, I might as well just talk about how ASUS handles the 7940HS. It's pretty interesting, and I wanna dive a bit deeper into that because there's some interesting stuff happening over here. While turbo mode hits a constant 80 watts right across the board and silence starts at 65 watts before plunging down to 45 watts, check out performance mode. It stays at 65 watts a bit longer than quiet, but in the end, it flatlines to the same lower power level too. Temperatures are pretty weird as well, with turbo mode heading above 96 degrees, silent ends up around 87 before the power cutback, and that causes temperatures to finally level out between 76 and 77 degrees. But that performance mode is all over the place, guys. It peaks at 91 degrees before finally getting to a constant 71 degrees. And that causes an absolute disaster for performance mode if you're using the CPU for longer intensive tasks. Meanwhile, performance mode ends up being louder than silent despite getting its butt kicked in at the clock speed department. And if we overlay the Blade 14 results with this, the G14 makes a lot more noise as well, which does sort of make sense since it's running the CPU at a higher power envelope. I think it's pretty obvious that ASUS designed performance mode to be great at quick benchmarks and sort of cheat at longer acoustic and temperature tests. It's almost like a cheat code built into the system to trick reviewers into thinking the system is faster, cooler, and quieter than it actually is in this mode. But guess what, Asus? We caught you. So in the end, how does that all translate into real-world performance? Now, I'm gonna start with some synthetic tests just to get a baseline and then move on to some longer tests. So in Cinebench Multicore, what you're seeing here is gonna be repeated throughout almost all of these results. Basically, when it comes to intensive multicore workloads, the Ryzen 9 7940HS is almost unbelievably better than the 6900HS. It's just a quantum leap forward in a single generation. Even single core gets in on the action too with a solid 20% bump. Of course, the AMD systems can't compete with the Intel ones over here, but you also have to remember these Ryzen processors are much more efficient. But what about from a more competitive standpoint against the Razer Blade 14 that also has the same CPU? Well, even in balanced mode, this G14 is able to consistently beat it, mostly because ASUS is running their processor at significantly higher wattage. So of course, it comes out pretty far ahead in most situations. 
But you also have to remember that G14's additional horsepower comes with the trade-off of it being much louder as well. Now, on the other hand, the Blade 14 we tested has an RTX 4070, which is one of the reasons why it costs so much, plus the Razer Tax, of course, but that causes a small improvement in resolve render times. Meanwhile, Premiere Pro is actually the first place we see a bit of an issue. Because first and foremost, if you're using Premiere Pro, getting an Intel-based device will save you a ton of time for render outputs due to their QuickSync engine. You'll also notice that this year's G14 is being beaten by last year, and that's because the ARC 6800S GPU on that device is a monster in this program compared to the RTX 4060 on our sample. Speaking of the RTX 4060, here's the interesting thing. I didn't see any of those power or frequency shenanigans that happened to the processor. This GPU behaved exactly like you'd expect, but with the power literally blasted to 11, since this is one of the only 4060s we've seen that hits 120 watts in the highest power mode. Meanwhile, performance mode hangs out around 95 watts, while silent only gets to 55 watts. The temperatures and noise are a bit higher than I'd like to see, but in this case, the G14 actually makes less noise than the Blade 14, which is definitely good news for gamers. The bigger news here is how well this less expensive model compares to the last one's highest end spec, one that costs more than $800 if you bought it at launch. I mean, the RTX 4060 can't win in every situation, but this thing gives you a phenomenal bang for your buck, and a lot of that, at least at 1080p, is due to the huge CPU upgrade, since a lot of these games end up being a bit CPU limited. But wait, there's more good news here too, and that's the fact that the Blade 14's insanely high price doesn't net you a noticeable frame rate increase. It's 10% here and 15% there, but is that worth $2,700? Personally, I don't think so. The story at 1440p is almost the same. The RTX 4060 might be running at a higher wattage, but it struggles to convincingly beat the RX 6800S in every situation. But does that matter? Absolutely not, because we're talking about two very different price points, so it was pretty much expected. And yet, it does manage to pull ahead more often here, which might be due to Nvidia's more advanced caching structure. This is also where the Blade 14's 4070 can shine a bit more by delivering a more fluid gaming experience, but the massive premium over the G14, for most people at least, isn't worth it at all in my opinion. I love seeing this kind of performance from a thin and light laptop that typically costs less than $1,600. It's a massive achievement for people who don't have two grand and more to spend on a gaming laptop, but still want the ability to game at high resolutions with most of the in-game details turned up. So that's the 2023 Zephyrus G14. Is it a perfect laptop? Absolutely not. But for the value, especially when you find it on sale, it's certainly worth considering over something like the Razer Blade 14. It still has its own set of issues, and thankfully there is an amazing Reddit community that constantly addresses potential workarounds or fixes. I was a bit disappointed with the way Asus handles the power levels for the new Ryzen CPU, but in the end, you're still getting great performance, and honestly, for as low as $1,400, you're getting a lot of value considering how expensive laptops are getting these days. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about the G14, and now I hope it paints a clear picture in terms of what you should be considering if you're shopping between this or the Blade 14. Uh, let us know what you guys think about it in the comments. I'm Igor with Hardware Connects. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. And spend responsibly.